Trust. Trust is something that looks true, but with neglect, what we end up with is rust. And after that, what's left for us? That's good. <laughs> it's amazing what you can come up with the night before. <laughs> the Edelman Trust Barometer asks people around the world how much we trust businesses in different sectors to do what is right. These are the sectors that were included in the latest survey. Of these sectors, which one do you think is the most trusted around the planet? Financial service technology. 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 It is technology. I don't really know why, but I guess it is, and so that's what it was. Now, what do you think the sector is that is least trusted? Financial services. Financial services. Financial services. Financial services is the winner in this category. And just to look at the relative differences, Technology is trusted by about 79% of the people. I think this would have been higher if Steve Jobs had not died and if the, the iPhone 5 had been released according to when people thought it would be out. And the financial services sector is, uh, is quite a bit lower. And as an insider, I, I can see why that is. But as customers, do you have thoughts on why this sector would be the lowest rank of all the sectors in the entire world? Like, any thoughts? Service charges. The service charges? Profits. Well, they're and they're on volatility. The stock market up and down, volatility, they are up and down. Yeah, well, I was thinking see? everyone would say that they can't think of any reasons, but <laughs> I found more than I was expecting. Now, in Canada, there are unique aspects that make some of these things even worse. Uh, the sector I know most is life insurance, and in that, what you find is that unlike sellers of mutual funds and securities, real estate, car insurance, home insurance, those kinds of things, a life agent is not subject to any mandatory industry oversight, which is different from every, every other aspect of financial services. And the Globe and Mail says that because of this, customers are being put at risk. Now, this is something that they wrote in 2010. And do you think anything at all has changed? Unfortunately, no. Now, they also go on to say that your insurance broker is supposed to be working for you, but commissions, bonuses, and pricey all-expense trips often factor into their decisions. When I used to work in head office, uh, it would cost about $10,000 to send an advisor and their spouse on a trip. Now, there is no way that money like that would be spent if it did not affect the decisions of those advisors to sell certain products. It just wouldn't make any economic sense. So they go on to say that such incentives amount to a conflict of interest. Now. Newspapers write things to make them interesting for readers. But do you think that there might be some truth in what this research or reporting is showing? So the question is, what can we do to spot someone that we can trust? And I'm not talking specifically about financial services, but trust in general. This is something that I've been thinking about for a number of years because I tend to be gullible, I tend to be trusting, and as a consequence, I end up getting burned, and then I become less trusting next time. I've been trying to figure out what formula or prescription trust might have, and this is my latest thinking as of last week. I had a different formula last year, and then in December, I got burned on that, and I had to revise it, and I think I've got one that works now, but I would appreciate your thoughts as we go through this. Has anyone read this book by Malcolm Gladwell? Okay, so what does he talk about in this book? Trust your instincts. He talks about the idea of making snap judgments and how those can be surprisingly accurate. The first element of trust is chemistry. Do you like the other person? 
Do you think that they like you? This is a very fast way to tell whether there's even a point in exploring further because you have your gut feeling, your instinct. But this isn't really enough. Our theme tonight is the Academy Awards, and there we see all these actors and we have certain impressions of what they are like in real life, but we don't actually know. What we are really doing when we're hiring someone is seeing whether they can actually do the work that we are hiring them for. And that requires a different book by Malcolm Gladwell to help us out. This time we'll turn to Outliers. Has anyone read this book? Oh, fewer people. Okay. I thought more people would have read this because they read his previous book. And what does this book talk about? Maybe I'm confusing all the books, but is it, does it have to do with when you're born and if you're like if you keep practicing it? it I think it mentions something about a rotisserie guy who sold all these rotisseries and people embraced him. I'm mixing it all. Okay, I think you're together. thinking about what the dog <laughs> saw, which is okay, that's uh, yeah, some a different person. This one talks about the ten thousand hour rule. A Nobel laureate Herman si Herbert Simon said that it takes 10 years of extensive practice to excel in anything. 10,000 hours works out to be about 3 hours a day for 10 years. It's actually 2 hours and 45 minutes. The second lever, or second element of trust, is credentials. You want someone who has the ability to do the work for which you are paying them. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be only from particular designations. It can also be from practical experience. But this is the other part. So you've got the heart part and you've got the brain part. Those are the two elements. Now, the other element that I had in this formula was generosity. I thought that if you've had someone who had who was doing good things for their world, then they couldn't really be doing bad things for you. And I found out that that was a little simplistic, because sometimes there's a veneer there. So you might find someone, and they seem to be doing wonderful things in charities, they belong to boards, etc. But you see that they're really just there because they're trying to sell stuff. There's another element that I think is the missing one, and that is congruence. Congruence has to do with you being a detective and looking for clues to see whether there are inconsistencies, whether there are flaws of character, whether there are warning signs that tell you that things may not be quite the way your heart and your brain think they might be. Children are masters at spotting incongruence. I'm not using the right vernacular. Children are very good at spotting inconsistencies. So if this is your breakfast, then it's very tough to explain to a child that they can't have a donut and coffee also. Right? They just have trouble with those kinds of things. For congruence, what you want to do or look for what you want to do or look for clues to see that your interests are being put first. Can you think of some signs of congruence that might show that someone is acting in your best interest? I know it's a tough word, but uh, thoughts on what that might be? You can Google them or research them at all online and to see what they've done before. Possibly. Are there other things that can work with the system? Well, one is that they could actually, if you're actually engaging with them, uh, that they ask you questions about what your interests are, that they show an interest in furthering what your goals are in order to do that and understand instead of assuming. Okay. Other thoughts on what congruence might be? Yes. Um, well, I'm a consultant, so if the client approaches me um, and I can't, fit it, if I can't fulfill the requirements that they've asked me to do, I will decline the business and I will refer them to an expert who can fulfill the job requirements that they need. So, um, for me, what congruence means is I have fiduciary responsibility to have the best interests for my client. Even if I can't do the work for them, I will refer them to somebody that I they can. Okay, other thoughts on congruence? A couple of other thoughts, because I've been thinking about this a lot. 
And I do like the aspect of generosity. So I think that is certainly a component of congruence, but it's probably not enough. Another element that can show that people have your best interests at heart is advocacy on your behalf. You'll find that many people belong to organizations which push the interests of that organization, but are they doing things in a public manner to show that they really care about you and are taking a stance? And I know that in the past I've done many discussions about social media, which I won't mention this time, but that is a way that you can see whether someone is walking their talk, because it's hard to fake for a long time. If someone is going on the record saying things that are of benefit to their clients rather than sticking with their industry, then that shows that maybe there's a belief system there that has some value to it. Any other comments on congruence? We'll take, we can take one more. Okay. So, do you agree with this particular prescription? Do these elements seem to be the correct ones? Do you think there's something missing, something that you would add, something that you would change? I really value your feedback because I'd like to have a good definition so I don't have to keep changing it. Yes? I think that this is a very uh, cerebral approach uh, to trust. I think intuition has a lot to do with it. You need to feel um, something from that person, that individual. I think it's, a, it's your gut feeling. Okay, so that would be perhaps the chemistry aspect then? <laughs> Could be while you're there, but when you're away from that person, is, you know, I guess it's hard to say it would fall into chemistry, but I think intuition is another another element to it, albeit it can be a smaller element, but it's definitely there. Okay, so something that's intangible. Where yeah, it's intangible. Okay, yes. I, I kind of agree with the gut instinct, you know, as a recruiter. Um, yes, I have the credentials, I have three designations, but I've interviewed so many people now over the phone or in person. It really is a gut instinct now, and I'm almost 99 percent right in terms of if that person's a good placement for a company or not. Um, and I think what I based on is, yes, there's a little bit of that chemistry, that gut instinct, but it's mostly my experience. You know, I've done this so many times now. I've been recruiting for, I don't know, 20 years now. So I understand, um, based on my gut instinct, yes, I'll ask certain questions, but it really is the gut instinct, the first minute, the first impression, how do you appear? To me, how are you going to appear to my client when I bring you forward? So a lot of it is gut instinct, and it's more than, I think, just chemistry. It's, I'm leveraging from my experience. Okay, now you're discussing it, your area of expertise, but suppose yeah. you were hiring a plumber. Yeah. Then would you just rely on your gut instinct there also? I wouldn't. First of all, yeah, I would decline that work as a consultant. I could only do No, no sorry, I mean that if you were hiring one to fix something in your own place. Uh, then I'd get my husband to do it. <laughs> okay, the different plans. Yes. I, I believe that this works as gut instinct. That's because I see it working, but mentally I don't. I don't believe it. You know, this is, doesn't make sense to me, but I know it works. It's something that is unknown to me because this is not the way I operate. I'm very rational and I like to have concrete facts. But somehow there is something in this gut yet. So I have to admit, well, yes, I believe it works. Uh, that's fine. Yes. In fairness to promote, if you read the book blank, it refers to making snap decisions or quick decisions when a person has experience in the area that they're making the decision making <coughs> on. What it also refers to, however, is when you're making snap decisions when that experience is lacking. And in those types of situations when you're preparing a plumber and you don't have any experience, you shouldn't be relying on your um, your snap decision, snap decision making, quick decision making processes. So, uh, it, those elements that you're referring to are, I think, implied in some of the uh, the model, the framework that that promote has has presented here. So, uh, it's there's there's some thought behind this, and I think uh, it deserves uh, consideration. Well, what about yes? yes. I think um, um, it's an innate thing that human beings usually trust when they know they in groups, like, you know, referrals, or I know I'm going to be part of that group, and that group is such and such, you know? So the reason I'm telling you this is this new thing for Twitter for me. You know, a lot of people go and 
uh, you know, they follow certain people because they trust that a group of them are to be trusted. They belong. So I think that's one of the things, like the referral and knowing that the other person is part of it. So you trust that. Rather than credentials these days, everybody has major credentials, you know. And you wouldn't be doing your, you wouldn't be like, let's say, a plumber if you don't have the good credentials, you know. So I think it's also who you belong to. So you're talking about maybe the network that people belong to is maybe giving guidance on who to you trust. trust. Okay. Yeah, so I, I belong. You know what? I'm, I, I trust. I, I I trust this group. See, like what I was telling you about the Twitter. A lot of people follow them because a certain amount of people follow them. So they trust that this is going to be beneficial to them. I'm going to trust this person because so many people are part of that group. Okay. So one more comment from the back. Yeah. So I was gonna say, like, I'm a I'm a home inspector. So when uh, you look at a house and you see that there's problems, that people always ask you, know somebody. For me, it's always about screening my contractors or possible contractor. So for me, it's you know, it's it's a lot more of this okay, we this thing. But for me, it's all about proof and following up to the end degree, finding out. Let me see examples of your work, and then from there, and then having the knowledge, I have the knowledge, compare that. With that, then I can say, oh, this person is safe, and then I'll go ahead and pass the referral. So for me, it's a lot more on proof, uh, and also part of the gut, but the, it's more of the proof. I need to see it. Okay. And okay. an additional comment? 85% of people, 85% of managers, make decisions based on knowledge that they acquire from people they know. <coughs> the 15% of people that often don't make decisions based on Factual, or what is considered um, factual information, are often either new to a situation, new to a company, don't know the other people in the environment, and they're sourcing from unknown sources or packages, databases, things like that. But over time, almost everyone, regardless of whether they indicate themselves as being packages or not, rely on people, social networks, or other sources, people that they know for the information that they acquire and use. I think there was a comment from this side also. No, I had one comment, but I think Leila kind of said it's kind of word of mouth. I think if you're in a group and it's word of mouth and you hear some good things about that person, that kind of helps with the trust aspect, doesn't it? It was kind of like the wisdom of crowds yeah. kind of idea, yeah. the IMDB thing where you look at exactly. what other people are saying about a movie rather than a particular person. Yeah. Okay, we have time for one other comment. Is anyone else? No. Yes. I think religion could be one of like the people with the same belief and then they would have uh, something sharing common and they have the same belief so it would be easier to be trusted with the same belief. <clears throat> okay, so thank you so much for those uh, suggestions. We've looked at ways that you can spot people to trust. Now, this is where we have the nasty question. The question is whether you are trustworthy, right? Because it's fine for us to be looking at other people, but we also need to be looking at ourselves. Because if you look at trust, at the heart is you. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chair.